It's Two Jerks and Some Guests, a comedic look at the news you never knew existed, with your hosts, Josh and Jason. This ought to be fucking good. And that's why Major League Two is the greatest movie ever made. Mm. And the only thing I can disagree with on that one is the fact that Major League One was such a phenomenal movie. It's so good. It's so good. It's really like, good. It really is. I have to go home and watch it. Dude. I know. I kind of uh, want to watch it too now. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to Two Jerks. Yep. Welcome back, guys. So, today's, um, today's just Two Jerks and guests. <laughs> and guests, yeah. <laughs> Which is not even really guests. Yeah. It's it, yeah, it's at like, this so. point... At this point, I'm trying to, like, so if I'm not a jerk, should it be two jerks and the asshole? Yeah. Like, or and something like guess. that? Two jerks and that one dickhead? Like, it, <laughs> it's, much. it's really getting to that point. Yeah. But, um, so, how was you guys' week? Good. Good, yeah. good. I mean, I had some really good poos, so. That's always, that's, that's always, always yeah. a good Those week. Always, yeah, that's going to be me in about a half an hour when this coffee finally yeah. burns uh, through me. So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I woke up this morning and had like three cups of coffee. So no, I just know it's just a oh, it's, ruin. It's gonna. <laughs> he double brewed that coffee. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And one I in had, the like, pot, one in his belly. Oh hey, here you go. I had Burger King. Oh, and, nice. and I've had two, two mocha frappuccinos. Yeah. Um, and that monster. So I haven't even cracked that yet. But once <laughs> we crack that. It's uh, on. that bathroom back there uh-huh. is, yeah. Those poor toilets. So, oh. so here's, here's how mine went. Keep Last... the old chapel going there. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, you might have to. I, uh, on the way home, I was like, I got a sweet tooth going. So I stopped and got a Snickers. Nice. Got a really Snickers I and a Gatorade. And then I had a Dr. Pepper, like, this morning. And then I had my coffee. And this morning, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm late. So I, I go into the pantry all that's in there is Oreos. So I have Oreos and a cup of coffee on the way here. This shit's going to have a heartbeat. <laughs> Your shit's going to have diabetes. No, I was just about to say, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah this your sh- shit's going to be insulin dependent. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 <laughs> insulin dependent. It is. It's insulin dependent shit. Yeah, your, monitor, your, your shit's has. coming out with a little syringe. Yep. It's got everything. It's, got the thing it's that, been broken its own finger. I think it's like, Brandon's mm, got. It's, uh, it's got a little pump. Yeah. It's got a little pump attached <laughs> it's to its phone. Little, it's it's your, pump. your phone starts beeping. You're like, what is that? Yep. Oh, my shit's, my shit's, in, <laughs> my shit's insulin's off again. Yep. Oh, God. My shit's blood sugar's low. Keto poodosis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your shit's gonna have to come out and go on a diet. Like, this is bad. Oh yeah. This is so bad. Oh my god. Well, whenever we whenever we all hang out late at night, we eat like shit anyway. Oh, so yeah, we, yeah. And, I mean it's yeah yeah. And then we wake up <laughs> early the next day to do one of these. Yeah. What's funny is we say early, in in early we mean. I, I was up by like eight thirty, I think. But yeah, by early <laughs> by early we mean we start right before lunch. Uh. <laughs> so well I'm gonna get right into it. Uh-huh. And I just wanna um uh, the uh I'm just gonna give you the funniest thing I've heard all week. Mm-hmm. Uh British man, thank God he is British. Is uh, rushed to the hospital after stuffing 15 hard boiled eggs up his ass <laughs> while he's high on drugs. <laughs> and uh, I know you gave me a little preview to the story earlier. And the one, the first question I had was whether they were shelled or not. Yes. Uh, so the 29 year old man and his partner. Partner. Uh, before peeling them and putting them up his ass. So partner. they boil these eggs. He had a bunny him. help him. Yeah. And you know, you gotta be like we gotta be really tight for me to be shoving eggs up. Well, your I think I think by partner I mean they're the domestic partners. I kinda I kinda got yeah, that. It's... I didn't want to jump to any conclusions though. Yeah. You know I'm, how those I'm... You know, those, against people, yeah, but they got some weird. Well, tradition. you know, there's just like a bunch of social social justice warriors and shit, snowflakes. It'd be like, hey, to presume that they were a couple. That son of a bitch. And I can't have that. But, um, so, uh, they have not been identified. Well, yeah, thank God. Why do they need to be identified? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they were under influence of GHB. I don't know what GHB Isn't that ecstasy? is. G- <laughs> that sounds familiar. Is it GHB ecstasy? Uh, so GHB, as we do a quick so little Google which one search. is this, the eggs? The eggs, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, because we want to take, we wanted to get serious oh, for a moment. Oh, by the way, <laughs> they're British, too, because... Hey, be honest, when you uh, heard, first heard this, you were like, oh, fuck, that's a Floridian. No, they were high on acid. Oh, well, then there you go. Yeah. I mean, so, wait a minute, not, but that, that's, that's I've been high like, on acid multiple times and I've never wanted to shove anything in my ass. Yep, it, it, it's acid. So, Anti-sleep I love this. I love that they interviewed this guy and he goes, I started getting stomach pains and I thought something was wrong. You just shove 15 <laughs> eggs up your ass and you're wondering if something's wrong. <laughs> I like whose question was it? Like, did he buy two cartons? Oh, yeah. Or did he just go and get? He just got the one carton and three, and was like, "Fuck you! I just want the other three. I'm not paying for this whole carton. That's such a retail thing, too. I've heard. I only need three, so I need to buy all these. Yeah. Can you imagine him doing like the Southern Mother thing, where he walks into the uh, to the grocery store, opens each one, and is making sure they're. Oh yeah, you got to. Yeah, you got (laughs) to. Oh my god. Okay, who as a child, when their parent did that, found that embarrassing as hell? But now as an adult, you do it. Every single oh, time. yeah, because the last thing you want is a rotten egg in there. Yeah, Not only that, you broken one. Yeah, broken. Like, I I didn't do it. Like, when I first moved out, I didn't do yeah. it because I was like, yeah, I'll be rebellious. Fuck that shit. And you get yeah. home with an egg carton. You get, get home, and I'm like, I paid for 12 eggs, and three of these fucking things are cracked. Oh, yeah. And then you're calling the grocery store, and you're like, fuck you, you're going to give me my three eggs. <laughs> That's how we got the three eggs. <laughs> it's uh-huh. the only thing that makes any sense. You put it back in the carton, he's like, these are broken. Yep. They're like they're also boiled. They smell like shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're boiled. And smell like shit. Well, it's like the. Uh, did you ever read that thing? There's like the there was the meme going around for a while where the um, the kids that that grew up and they didn't know why their parents checked the cartons. So as they got to adults, they just thought it was the adult thing to do, and then it would be, be awkward. I was reading a story about mm-hmm. it. So the the girl would. Just open the carton and just look in it and then close it. But she had no clue why she was doing it. She just thought, this is the adult thing. This is what all adults do. All adults check this. And then it took them forever to realize, oh, yes, I'm supposed to be checking for cracks. So the the man came to the doctor. I want one. I want one. All right. (laughs) So, uh, uh, So the man went to the doctor and... Doctor found. Did these. he forget that he shoved the eggs up there? Uh, no, 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 no. I think he's uh, like, oh god, I have stomach pain. Well, this he can't be to... related to the fifteen form object I shoved up my ass. Yeah. So he, um, yeah, it's kind of a weird take on it. Mm-hmm. Um, they, the doctor said, upon arrival, the patient had tachycardia, one hundred twenty mm-hmm. beats per minute. Okay. And he tacho took twenty nine breaths per minute. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was. Under thing, and uh, he had so abdominal guarding over the entire stomach. Yeah, he was in pain. Yeah, he was in pain. Come to find out, he was going into abdominal sepsis. He How perf- long were the eggs up there? Well, he perforated. I oh, perforated his bowel. Pelvic l- colon lining. Yeah. Okay, so he perforated his bowel. Yeah. So he fucked so, himself. Yeah, so okay. So this, this is what he did. Dying. He took the eggs. Rammed him in his ass so hard that he popped a hole yeah. in his intestine, yeah. and his now poop was leaking into his abdomen. Right, which I don't know how familiar people are with sepsis, but you will die a horrible, horrible death. I, uh, yeah, I'm so. trying to figure out how hard he shoved an <laughs> egg up there too, to right? perforate it. Like, the this dude hole is... was measured at somewhere between a half an inch. And less. So, I mean, that's still a sizable mm-hmm. hole for your fucking colon. Oh, God, yeah. God. Um, but that's just fucking off. Can we, can, because this, I, I'm, I, I completely agree with you. I belong in the millennial generation. Mm-hmm. When did good old fashioned sex was not enough? You gotta. Well, I mean, I. I've done some weird shit, but I've never looked at a carton of eggs and been like, <laughs> I hey, mean, baby. I, here's the thing. We're going to hard it, boil. I have friends who are, who are younger than us uh-huh. who are in that millennial group that, like, um, are, like, more conservative in the bedroom than I am. Okay. Um, and, I mean, we, you know, we don't really need to discuss who they are, but there's just several members of our group that are just, like, really, like, 
you know, and it's not like I'm out there like, well, but that's the thing is, I'm, it's you, isn't it? What conservative? Yeah, bedroom? Your, your socks on. I'm socks light, on. Like, lights rrr, off. Sir, uh, <laughs> this, this is how I get down. Peen peen through the pee hole. Uh, that's right. Um, so, boxers. <laughs> socks on. Uh, only missionary. <laughs> Minimum contact, and you're not allowed to say a word. All right. Or yeah, break but, eye contact. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, if your if your sexual conquests involve a trip to the supermarket, and you walk down the aisle and you're like, "Yep, that'll be fun." At produce or <laughs> anything or like just that, eggs. <laughs> yeah. You need some help. You need Jesus. Yeah. I mean, here. Uh, I, I, anything that, like, whatever people do between themselves as adults to get each other off is what they do. I have no problem with this. The only thing that I find hilariously funny is the fact that it took 15 eggs, not 12 eggs, yeah. or one egg. Like, why not just one egg? Yeah, and who well, buys two dozen eggs? I mean, like, I never buy, I mean, well, I... Well, when, when well, I was, tra- like, when I was training, I used to. Yeah, I guess, but I... I, I mean, there was a purpose knew, for it but, at the time. but, I mean, there's six people in the house. Right. So, yeah. I mean, there's six of y'all in that house? Yeah. Oh, there is, yeah. So, I mean, there, it's, it's, that's one of the things that you get two dozen eggs. But if you got six people in that house and you, you're stuffing the eggs up there, mm-hmm. somebody's going without at breakfast, I'm just saying. <laughs> so. I mean, I... Uh... Oh, God. Yeah. I, okay, so I worked in the OR, as we both know. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen people with sweet potatoes shoved up their ass. I've seen people, like, and you have to pull that out a piece at a time. It uh, breaks apart. For people in other parts of the country, those are called yams, and if you've ever seen one... Oh, they're pretty big. Yeah, they're the, they're the size of a die-cast NASCAR car. There was a guy who went to a frat party up at UF, and he came in with a Donald Payne. <laughs> And was like, hey, so I have this abdominal pain. And when we cat scanned him, he had three cue ball, or three pool balls shoved up his ass. And he said, well, how did that happen? He goes, I don't know. I got drunk and passed out of this party last night. And they sh- That's great. No, I, was, <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but it, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. You must have been really fucking drunk if you didn't I... wake up with three of those things shoved up your ass. Yeah, w- one gets hovering around the area, and I wake up yeah, no, I don't care freaking how out, cold are. sweats, and I'm like, who's going near my ass? Yeah, like, he must have been like blackout drunk where you... Because, I mean, I've been so drunk where you just don't remember things, but uh, not so much to where people are shoving things up my butt. Um, uh, let's see. What else is... Oh, uh, broken drumstick. Broken drumstick? Mm-hmm. It was another one. But, um, so. and, and it was not the not the broken end that was up there. It was the other end. The unbroken end. Oh! Yeah. And then it perfor- that, that was a bowel perforation as well. Um... The human body inside is just not very tough. <laughs> like if you, but it's crazy, not designed to have things. The crazy thing like is about that up is, there. is like the human body is incredible. Oh yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful machine. It's it's incredible, but once you get past that thin thin barrier of epidermis. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah, quickly. Like let's take your heart for instance. You can poke a hole in the heart with just like if I just poke Tucking it. it. <laughs> poke it. But, so, um, I'm just going to move on. From yeah. That. It's, yeah. It's, a, moral of the story is, if it's not meant to go up there, don't put it up there. Yeah. Again, be safe. Be, be <laughs> safe. Whatever, whatever boundaries you're pushing, be safe. Yeah. And, you know, if you start having issues, go see a doctor. I, that's 15, my contention. If, so like, your 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 contention is like my contention with drugs, and this is what I say. I agree with Burt Kreischer completely. Mm-hmm. If he goes, uh, if uh, if someone offers you drugs, just take half. <laughs> Wait an hour, see how you, see what, see what happens. happens. <laughs> if you like it, continue. <laughs> so maybe he would have done all right with seven eggs. <laughs> Conceivably, like uh, I Do wonder you, how how many eggs were left up there when he. No, I wonder if this is like a back and forth game with them, where it's like he did one, 
Step it up to the next week. Oh, oh. partner does too. <laughs> next oh, week, sh- it's all on the same night. They're like, oh, yeah. they're like, oh, I got one up there, Steve. Like, really, Paul? I got two. Oh, no, we're going to just start doing so Paul and Dale. It, we're going to start doing Paul, Paul and Dale. Dale. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, if anybody, Paul's the one who's going to get 15 up there. I got I got Paul on that. Dale's well, going to so get 12, and then he's going to crap out. They would have 29 eggs. So they could have gotten three dozen as like a competition. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. The other guy just he took it like a champ and did fine. Yeah, he's fine. So we have a different take on this. We think it's a competition. Okay. We think that they went and bought thirty six eggs and they went back and forth. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. Oh my god, it's like four. taking shots. You see the movies and like shots so, and then one guy drops. And at this point we've determined that it's Paul and Dale doing this. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's fair. It's Paul and Dale. Yeah, that's fair. If, of the two of them, which one do you think would take the most eggs up the ass? Dale. <laughs> wow, we said Paul. I said Paul. Oh. Yeah, both said Paul. Uh, Dale. Oh, and by Dale the way, check them it. out at uh, Kicking It Old School here on Geek Culture. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or the prank. Leave a, or the, if or do, the if, prank. Please, please, God, leave a comment on their videos stating uh, which do an one, egg video. Which one do you think Yeah, would which win? one yeah. could take which more eggs up there? If you guys do that for me, I will, I will yep. love y'all forever. <laughs> <laughs> and he means love you long time. Yep, right. long time. 16 eggs deep, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is horrible. All right, so I do want to move on to something a little bit more serious. Um, I wanted to talk about this Asia Argento story and Anthony Bourdain. Um, Asia Argento was one of the uh, four thing of the Me Too movement. She, yeah, she was right up there with uh, Rose McGowan. Rose McGowan. Um, like, right when it first started, she was one of the first ones, like, hey, you know, burn Harvey Weinstein at the stake kind yeah. of area. And um, she actually, over the weekend, um, was seen, she's been paying off, she paid, him and her and Anthony Bourdain paid off a 17-year-old, uh, Jimmy Bennett is his name. Yep. Um sexual misconduct against him um she denied it denied it denied it for a long time and then this last weekend text messages uh revealed that uh yes she had had sex with him yeah you should see there's a photo of both of them together laying in bed yeah this one right here yeah her and the 17 year old holy crap yeah so they're both laying in bed together she looks like it's a selfie she's just she does not have any clothes on and neither does he it looks like looks like they just got done banging yeah so um and, uh, that's from T. he looks like he's 12 yeah, he does he's a 17 year old he look. he looks like such a little pretty boy bitch <laughs> he does he looks like he's fucking 12 he does and he uh he's he, a sexual assault yep he um he came out after he said he left the hotel after they had done their deed. Uh, she was 37, he was 17 at the time. Um, he was extremely confused, mortified, and disgusted with himself. He, he He's a 17-year-old kid. Those are not the words I would say. No. If Specifically, Asia Argento just, is on yeah, Are you Argento is on me? I'm, yeah. uh, I'm mortified and yeah. disgusted. I'm, I'm extremely... <laughs> Yeah. I'm extremely happy, excited, yeah. Yeah. and I'm taking elated. out a billboard, and I'm letting everybody know what just happened. Every, uh, guess who I just banged? I'm calling every friend yeah. I got. It's like, who... who guess who just his, touched my stinky little bean bean? his lawyer or his parents tell him to say that? <laughs> Pretty much. That's gotta um, be a... Because there's no way a 17-year-old boy is gonna be like, Dude, I banged this 30-year-old <laughs> hot chick. You, you know who she is? Let me show you a picture real quick. Oh, it was disgusting and terrible. Yeah, well, he okay. looks like he's got a baby face. He does. He looks yeah. like he's 12. Uh-huh. And I, let me ask you this. How much of this do you think he's, like, playing up just for, the like, notoriety? Oh, that I think that's what it is. Oh, absolutely. And the $380,000 he got from Anthony Bourdain probably helps. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I would I would act all mortified and butthurt for some $380,000. I would. Yeah. But. Oh, I love the nickname she gave him. So. When her and Bourdain started talking about the incident, her and Bourdain gave him the nickname Donkey. Wait, so... <laughs> Kid's she... slinging it, man. <laughs> so she... What is this? Yeah. In the... Okay, so she played... 
his mother in the heart is deceitful above all things. Yes. In 2004. Mm -hmm. Yes. 14 years ago. Yes. And he was three? He was three at the time? Uh, He's 14, 17 now, right? No, no, no. He was 17 17 then. Oh, so he was 17 at the time. Uh, No, he was 17, I think, last year. No, they said he was 17 at the time. Okay, yeah. Yeah, That's because it shows you... Oh, he was 17 Yeah, he's like five years old. It, like, yeah, we'd all be freaking out right now. No, like, no, it was, oh! Well, no, that's when they start... That's when they came in contact the first time. And then documents sent in New York include a photo of Archie lying down with Bennett in 2000... Okay, so in 2013, he was 17. Okay. 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 So he was so 10 then in 2004, at the time. Right, yeah. He was 10 at the time of the... Thing. So when yeah, so when she met him, she's like, ooh, ooh. seven years, little boy. I'm like, get that dick. I'm gonna get that dick. <laughs> I'm gonna gobble that dick like a Thanksgiving turkey. Like, and then five years later, now it's a thing. Well, and he, it's because she's the like the face of the movement. It's because yeah, yeah it's because she's she's one of the heads of the Me Too thing. Um, I don't want it. All right, that's fine. But so, um. Okay, go. And uh, so they, uh, Anthony Bourdain and her had the historically famous open relationship. Mm-hmm. They they talk about it. They talked about it numerous times before his suicide. He was he was a pretty nice guy. So I I don't want to say anything bad about him. Anthony oh, Bourdain, I love that show. Yeah, um, no they had an open relationship. It was kind of just that was their thing, mm-hmm. and that's cool. Do you? As long as you both are okay with it. Um, but, so, he paid $380,000 to have her, to have this kid keep yeah. his mouth shut, and recently Tex revealed that she did have sex with him, and to me, these texts, if I can find them, look like somebody goes, write this, I'm gonna send you these and then release these, cause I need, I need some backup. Like, she had this plan the whole time. If I can find these text messages. So, who released what, though? Um, it was her friend that released the text messages. Why would her friend just fucking out her? When, it, when I show you these text messages, you're probably going to agree. Or she just, wait, was she it a, wrote was, the, these. Basically, what she said is the whole time he was on top, and she didn't know it. Was, he was like an animal and all this other stuff, and... It was done in a flash, and she felt disgusting with herself afterwards, and all this stuff. She's basically trying to play like the. So she's now saying she's the victim. Not versus... the victim because she was down for it, but she also puts in there that she didn't know he was seventeen. She she says I had no idea he was a minor, and this other stuff. That's where that's if you put that in the thing, that's where I feel like it's yeah, a yeah you you, you you set these text messages up to make yourself not look so bad yeah um I would say that okay so read the text messages let's see what they say I'm desperately trying to find them uh, give me one moment um but so yeah I'm not finding them right this second um. So, yeah. What are you looking up? I'm looking up the uh, text messages. Hey, what do you, while I'm doing this, hey, you have any, I said these text messages seem like it's being played off as I'm trying to protect myself. This. Um, so, let me ask you this. So, did TMZ get, like, the paperwork that this had happened? They then were like, okay, well, we're going to release this because F you Asia Argento. And then she was like, oh, crap, I need some, some of my own ammunition. So she, got in con- or she sent text messages to a friend of hers. Her friend is like, nah, she's actually a good person. Look, boom, she didn't know he was underage. Boom, she didn't know what she was doing, even though he was only 17. And, and, what, and what does this poor kid have to say about little kid? He's an adult. Uh, he's like, just staying honest. very, very quiet right this moment. Well, he should, um, yeah, because otherwise he got to get the three hundred eighty thousand dollars back. Well, the big thing is, is they are still within the. Um, he, uh, he had a gag order on him, probably. 
Well, no, no, I mean, they're still within the, um... Statute of limitations. Statute of limitations. Oh, fuck, she committed a felony. Yeah, she's, she is now, they, if they decide to pursue this, she is under investigation for a felony. Um, mm. her text messages, they only give a few of them. Yeah. One of them states, the horny kid jumped me. And she's, it, obviously, this is... This is desperation. Yeah, this is desperation for her. Um, he continued to send her unsolicited nudes after their encounter. Um, she would present those if she had them. Yeah. Um, kept texting her. She broke off this relationship after it happened. Um, what it kind of seems like is this kid got pissed because some hot chick banged him and then didn't want to have anything to do with him afterwards. So he contacted her and was like, I could tell the police. Well, my thing is that this is he's a he's an he's an actor. He's a child actor. He's mm-hmm. grown up. So he's broke. Yeah, to yeah. me, it's a publicity stunt. It's the oh, I can get my name out there, and then n- not to just to put like a, maybe a little conspiracy thing into this because Harvey Weinstein is a insanely uh, powerful man. Yeah, and he's also a douchebag that belongs to burning hell. Right, exactly, and that's what I'm saying is like this whole Me Too thing is pretty much everybody in. Hollywood being like, he's a disgusting shitbag, and you should all know about it. So my thought is that I wonder if he has a role in this, or his people, you know what I mean? Because it's just so strange. And the kid's an actor, too, so it's just like, you didn't yeah, get 15 what is he, minutes of fame. What's and, he going to get out of it? Like, if he released it now, what does he get now? The kid? Yeah. Uh, pl- uh Fame. He's an actor. That's so the what best is, thing you yeah, but he's not. He, it's, this but not, you could, but you know. He can't, he can't parlay that into a role. He can't make any money you know, off of it. You could well, de- he could it could parlay it into a role, but he could definitely, you know, put himself out there. I'm willing to bet. Now. I'm willing to bet that if he got three hundred eighty thousand dollars, they put a gag order on him, so he is not allowed to talk about this. Right. So and gag I, orders can be broken by investigation, though. Well, he can. You can talk to the cops, but he yeah. can't. The judge would have to lift the gag order. So what I'm willing to bet is TMZ through whoever. Got a hold of this was like, well, we're about to blow this up. Asia, what do you got to say? And she went, oh, shit. Let me uh, come up with some text messages to what I sent to my friend three or five, however many years ago. Uh, it was it was more, re- mm-hmm. these text messages were more recent because the story had come out in their circle. Exactly. So. Yeah, so she, but here's the thing, though. It's like, so she committed a felony. She technically statched, how old was she at the time? 37. Oh, yeah, she yeah, statutory raped. Yeah. She statutory raped his ass. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's so hard, like, because there's that weird double standard yeah, about yeah. boys, and, like, if this had happened to a, a 17-year-old chick with a 37-year-old male actor, we'd oh, all be freaking out yeah, and people would be burning them in state. Right. Yeah, but, you know, the fact that it's a, a female actor, actress and, uh, a, I mean, and a, a young a, male a actor. very hot female in a... Right, but a very good-looking kid. I don't find her that attractive. I'm not. She, gonna lie. She's she's pretty, but she's, she's pretty, but she's. she's, she's yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to break yeah. my neck trying to get it and inside her. Yeah, it's just to me. It's just the timing. It's like with stuff like this. It's it's just way too convenient. Like, well, and but it just goes to show you, like any time that you're going to get up on the on your high horse, and you're going to oh, start, you, you and you're sure going to start handling. Yeah, yeah, you better make sure that you're clean as a whistle. Especially like I understand, like okay, so she couldn't not. Do the Weinstein thing? You, ha- I mean, every you, if somebody exists like that, you have to put them out. Oh yeah, you have if to. You have, you have to crush. Yeah, you have to crush your own one bad shit. What she yeah. should have done is just owned up to it immediately. Yeah, and yeah. then because she was denied, 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 and they're like, "Look, bitch, we got pictures, we got you dead and to rights. Tags. Like, yeah, we have everything." And then she's like, "Oh, okay, that's so mm. you kind of shot yourself in the foot." Then I it's don't a, think this diminishes anything that she's done because still, like that Me Too movement is definitely it was definitely it's for needed. the best. It's, you yeah. need to you need yes. to sexual assault and stuff like that is it's fucking gotta, awful. We're in 2018, people. It's got. Yeah. Sexual crimes, yeah. they should have uh, gone with the way of the dark so, ages. Yeah, because right. here's the thing, and this is something that I read earlier. So we were, everybody's talking about the Molly Tibbetts thing. Yes. Okay, Molly Tibbetts died. Right. And, and, they're, and they were talking about, um, so of course, certain 
parts of our, our political system are like, it's because the guard wasn't illegal. <laughs> I wasn't going to hit the table. Yeah, no, he put his uh, hand up. I was like, uh, oh, no. <laughs> he's going to slap oh, the no, table. We're about to not be able to hear anything. <laughs> uh, it's because right. the guy wasn't a, illegal. If we had, we had that wall. wall. If we had that, that wall. That just wouldn't have happened, which is retarded ever. because <laughs> that, that doesn't work that way. It's pretty Americans that rape people so the, all the time. Well, not they just that. The guy was never, so the guy was here for seven freaking years, never committed any crimes, never was deported. Nothing ever happened. So if he had been deported and let back in, yes, then that means that our immigration system failed. No, this guy's just flying under the radar. Yeah. So it means our immigration system didn't fail right. because this guy's doing, like, legit, like, he's, he's being legit. Shit. Yeah. But then you, so then all of a sudden, why does he snap and kill this girl? He, she, he, she, she pushed off his advances. Right. No, I don't want your peen peen. Right. Keep your peen peen over there. I don't want any. And next thing you know, he snaps and fucking kills her. How many times has this happened? So they started talking about it. What's, and don't get me wrong, the fem, the fem Nazis are like, the leading cause of death for women in America is not cancer, but it's men. Men, yeah. Which they're full of shit it's on. It's actually, stupid. it's actually heart disease and diabetes and obesity. And all this is yeah. it's much more prevalent. Yeah, your than, health is more it, you know, But <laughs> who kills 80% of women? Is a romantic partner. Right. That is a true statistic. Uh, it, it, there's a whole legal statistic on crime of passion. It's, yeah. it's yeah. literally it's it's one of those things that like the judge takes into account when he's sentencing you. Is this a crime of passion or was this? Yeah, they, out? they should you should throw crime right. of passion out. Which like, is that's just which retarded. is fucking stupid. Yeah, just because your wife wants to get some ding ding on the side doesn't it should not you should bear not, you, can, you should you should not bear no bearing on whether you kill her or yeah, not. Right. One hundred percent agree. But I mean, yeah, like, I know they do that. That's what a crime of passion yeah, is. Yeah. Like it's when, a spontaneous. Yeah, but that's yeah. fucking stupid. Yeah, and that, I agree with you. There is a human condition. We are animals. We do have an animalistic approach. I fully understand and appreciate it. But I'm not going to murder. There's a lot of times where I would love How to just many times? punch somebody in the face, and I don't even do that. So it's uh-huh. like, there's hey. a lot of times I would love to hit a car and just be like, you piece of shit, yeah, but get off the road. When I say animalistic response, you see it I mean, I legitimately have, like, not, like, walked in and caught somebody cheating, but I'm like... Oh, uh, you busted! Yeah, you were busted. Right. You got some. You got some dirty little peen peen. Right. Oh no, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm now. I'm yeah. just. I'm bouncing. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't even worry about it. Like no, yeah. no, no. I know point, you're crying and everything. You're good. You're good. You did your thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave. Yeah. And it, like that's what a normal human being should do. Right. And I understand so, if you get angry, <laughs> you could be really hurt, and you you know maybe. Maybe she was doing something because, like, I haven't. I honestly haven't followed the story that much. Neither it's just one of those things. I followed it for like the last two that, days. It's terrible what happened to the girl, mm-hmm. but we're sensationalizing it because he's an immigrant. So that's why, why the big. Guy. That's what the story is because he's an immigrant. So and, he yeah, and, but crime, here's. So. It, but but my point on all this, like, fuck his immigration status. I can right. care less about that. But why, like, and don't get me wrong, America is not the leading cause or, or not the the leading country in. And female deaths related to men. I mean, India has us, you know, yeah, a thousand like, times over. <laughs> China has Turkey, us a thousand. Honor killings yeah, and honor and killings and shit like that. Yeah. Like, you know, we are way down on the totem pole. Right. But we're still there. Right. Like, right. why? Yeah. Like, like, look at the father out in Colorado. He butchered his two kids and his pregnant wife. Yeah. And, and that's and another story I wanted just like a, to bring up today. Just a guy. Just this, just this dude. Yeah, that story's like, gotten really weird. Yeah, yeah like, like, what, what ha- happened? Like, what happened? What a, made you... I have a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a, and a and newborn. So, yeah. mm-hmm. so, in, like, two years, am I just going to, like, snap? And, like, what made... That's what happens him? when you don't get sleep, man. It's true. <laughs> but they invented coffee. Yeah, so I, I and, coffee. I mean, honestly, that's what people talk about, like, like okay, ch- teaching your son's... Like, uh, like one of the other big things, and I, and I saw this recently, was uh, a girl who got kicked out of her own prom, uh, or one of those dances, yeah, yeah. because the male chaperones um, thought, or, or honestly enough, were having urges or whatever, oh, you know what I'm saying? Because the way she was dressed. Yeah. So you have this high school girl surrounded by a bunch of adult males, right. and they can't function because of how she's dressed. So she has to So leave. she has to right. leave. And it's like, it's not because how of How is like, this possible? It's not because you're like I a could, sick pedo. Yeah. It's because, yeah because, it's because she's dressed Really? Like, like, we should just take you out back, all of you, yeah. and just beat the shit yeah, out of you. you are the been, educators yes, in this. Yes! Like, you're the you ones the, around children like that all yes. the time. So yeah. let us take you outside. Yeah. Let me... Beat some sense into you, yeah. and then you can go back to doing your yeah. thing. See, because I think what's happened is, 
is back in back in the day, as we all know, back in the day, some situation like that would arise, or some pedo situation would arise, or whatever, and literally you would lynch him. You would yeah. lynch him, you'd shoot him, you'd beat the shit out of him, you'd stab yeah. him to death, whatever the hell you were going to do, right. you would do it. Now we're all like, oh, hey, you know, they all have rights too. Like, I'm I'm a member of several different podcast groups on um, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And one of the big ones that I'm a member of, they're very, very pro-criminal. Like, there's no other way to say it. Like, they don't really care about the victim's feelings and or emotions or whatever, you know. But, but the criminal, oh... We have to make sure that their mental health is taken care of and this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 blah. Totally taking the blame away from what they did uh, and placing it squarely somewhere else. Yeah, we have to rehabilitate them. We have to rehabilitate them. No. Um, No, we don't. Some people just, if you you diddle a little kid, if you murder somebody, you have some chemical imbalance that just will not be fixed. Mm -hmm. Nobody at this table, I'm hoping, I can speak for myself especially, (laughs) has their urges to diddle little kids. And if we did, there's some chemical imbalance in your brain. So my biggest thing is, I think our country's biggest issue is mental health. I don't think there's anything bigger than that. Uh, But here's the thing. But that's what I'm saying. There's no cure to this. What's that? There's well, no cure. Well, that's what no, I'm saying, no, no. We so can't that, rehabilitate them, so what do we do with them? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. What do we, we do can, with them? I don't know. We need to put We rules. call them from the herd. <laughs> we I'll take them out back. <laughs> we take them out back. Give me an excavator. I'll dig us a big right. old trench. But I'm I'll saying, start though, lining folks people, up. 22 to the back of the head. There's people, though, like, because I, I... But you got to figure They're out, done. Like, but you got to figure out, like, these people were also children at one point. So you got to figure... You can't... With mental health of children, you have to... Hold on, they're not children now. Right, but I'm saying, though, it's a thing that they've dealt with their whole lives. So it's something I gotta... So I don't, child, see, like, I don't ha- see, for me, for me, and this is just me, right. I don't need to know why they did it. Right. And I just need to know they did it. They did it. Yeah. And I'm good with that. Yeah. And then I could go ahead and execute That's them. That's fair. And yeah. just but call, I think we need call to get them it. from the herd. I think we need to get it. Oh, much. We God. We need to figure Ugh. something out. Because obviously you have medications and pills. And, and I mean, if we want to save bullets, I'll just run them over with a bulldozer. That's true. So the biggest, the biggest part on your topic was you said mental health. Yeah, I think mental health is the biggest issue in this country. I, I 100% agree with that. But I also agree with the fact that we've ignored it. That's what I'm saying. That's the for problem. For so long. That's the problem. Then now what do we do? Because we've now got a stigma against mental health. Right. You get on antidepressants and it's a big old joke with a month. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, who, like who here's been on antipsychotropic medication? Uh, I have not. Y- yes. And, but I, I also right. and I verbally <laughs> medicate. You, you self-medicate, yeah. which yeah, I don't. I, you self-medicate, I do and, but yeah, I don't because, self-medicate. Right, no. But I've been on, I've been on, yeah. uh, like, how to put this? I've been on one of the strongest mood enhancers humanly possible. At the max dosage, four times a day, and it did nothing. Yeah, like and I felt like a pent up string that was about but to explode right. and just commit but murder all over is, God's good creation. <laughs> if, <laughs> you're, <laughs> if you're a man, if you're a man Sorry. in this country, and we've all we're all here in the South, it's definitely in the South. It's one of those things. If you go to therapy as a man, there's always that stigma. Of, I think there is, but I also think that that's a personal thing because, like, I feel no stigma. I was tell a perfect stranger I went to therapy. I don't give a damn. Yeah, like yeah. I, but but then again, I'm a lot different than most right. and individuals. I think, I think, and as so you, as you get older too, you kind of you kind of realize that you're like. Uh, but hopefully, you realize it's like, you know, f- screw the whole being treated differently. It's like you have to realize if you need help, you you need to get help. Mm-hmm. But so like the one thing with, um, but getting older is the problem. Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. by the time you are older. The situation's already ingrained oh, itself. Yeah, it's already done. You need to get this help, you know, early on. Um, I forget the country that was doing it, but they had the, you know, the if you have impure thoughts about children or whatever like that, you could go get free state aid, and they would, you know, they wouldn't lock you up, well, but you would be in. And here's the thing: is I remember, remember we discussed this a while ago. Um, let's say you take an individual who has these urges. Mm-hmm. But he's never acted on those urges, and he goes to a state doctor, or a doctor, a therapist, and he goes, hey, I have these urges. I don't want to have these urges. I know they're not right. I do not act on them. I do not do pedo stuff or have child porn or anything like that. Can you help me? At that point, that person is trying to to, 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 yeah, trying to fix himself 
on something that he knows himself is wrong. or herself. Himself or herself. Pedophiles I know. Or not. No, because there's the, I yeah, there, I do know when I was a cop. Obviously, because I, I mean, we just yeah, talked about Asia one. Argento is one. <laughs> we just talked. Um, about, I mean, <laughs> the, we're being the, honest. The pedophile Asia Argento. Oh my <laughs> god, that should be the name of the podcast. <laughs> the name of this episode should be the pedophile Asia Argento. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, hold on. Yeah. So needless to say, and we were discussing this, and I had a friend say, "Well, no, you can't do that." Because if you do, then actually what happens is the state report or the doctor has to report you to the state, right? Sure. And the state actually puts you on the sex offender registry, right? Even if you've never done anything, right? And I'm sorry, but I think that's wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you are seeking help and you've never actually, com- it's like saying like I want to rob people, but I've never committed the crime. Can you help me? Yeah. You know, or if I'm a klepto. But I've never stolen anything. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. These people are supposed to help you through this. Mm-hmm. Like, we're literally going like, um, yeah, but you might bite somebody, so let's go ahead and treat you like a dog. Yeah. Like, it just that's, doesn't make any yeah, sense to that's me. That's totally true. Yeah, because if you, if you, because everybody has urges, and we've all, no matter what you say about yourself, everybody's had some feeling that you probably should not have at some point. I want to kill people. Right. Bring it up. Whenever you, uh, whenever you, um... If you don't act on it, though, and then you go and seek help, you're right. You, the uh, the answer should not be, well, let's 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 put him on a registry. Yeah, let's put him on a registry, and, and, and then we're gonna watch this guy. Everything we're gonna yeah, we're gonna ha- we're gonna have to make weekly visits to his job. Right. We're gonna have to talk to his neighbors, which you're, is horrible. You're on the re- you haven't done anything. I know, and all, and it's like for people that want help, and then that's why people don't go yeah. and get help. Exactly. Because you're you're right. It's a stigma of oh well, if I say something, then I'm gonna get in trouble. Have you done anything? No. Do you feel this way? Yes. Okay. Well, I went to school for all these years, and I'm getting paid this amount of money, and I'm charging you an ungodly amount of money to talk to me, not to punish you, but to help you. Like, that Mm -hmm. was one of the things. Like, I wanted to go into um, psychiatry or psychology for a long time because the human mind to me is just amazing. Like, I, the brain is just a a mystery that we'll we'll never unlock. Um, But... I always want to know what made people do the things they do. Like, I want to know why I think a certain way, but then the guy across the way from me is some, like, sick murderer, you know, or yeah. has some terrible thoughts. And I'm like, what What made that? You know, and I know it goes into genetics, and it can be all this other shit, but I'm just like, where, where's that disconnect between a, me and then that guy? Yeah. But yeah, the whole nature versus nurture argument. Right, and then I always know. wondered, you know, because it's just like, I think it's some people, some people have come in with almost like these parallel lives to mine, but then they do awful things, and I'm like, well, where's the like? What happened? Why do we almost have same and also, lives, and then but yours went this way, and mine? Yeah, you also like, get what? those. You also get those people you hear like the, the serial killer. Well, my dad beat me every day of my life. Um, yes, yeah, all this other people. kind of stuff. Uh, I was sexually abused, and then you hear the same uh, another person say the same thing. My parents beat me. I was raped by a teacher or whatever, and they're a fucking a no, preschool no, no. teacher. Yeah, mm-hmm. perfectly well, normal. Adjusted well, adjusted, yeah, well-adjusted humans. Well-adjusted humans. Nothing wrong with them. Well, yeah, and that's what I wanted to know. And that's something we've actually happens. discussed. Is my my first sexual experience technically was a felony. Yeah. My yeah. first sexual experience was you got uh, Asia Argento. I got Asia. <laughs> I got Asia Argento. <laughs> And the Argento. I got Ar- we the we're gonna call it. A- we're gonna call it Argento. Yeah, I got Asia Argento. Ziggy got Asia Argento. Yeah, Ziggy got Asia Argento. <laughs> I, I did. I got Asia Argento. And when I look back at the, like that incident, I like I'm like this kid apparently or this guy. I don't feel any shame. I don't feel anything like wrong. I don't right. feel. I don't feel. And honestly enough, I don't feel like she did anything wrong. Right. Like. I came out of a perfectly healthy and well balanced to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're all broken somehow. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you're on this podcast, you're broken somehow. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean you you've been a productive member. But I've been a productive member of society. society. You know? Yeah, you know, I don't commit crimes. Right. I, you know, I pay my taxes on time. I do you, all the yeah. You, I do you all had, that stuff. You had a job. I was a, pride. You have a weapon. I was a so cop for thirteen years. Uh, I didn't want to say, I was, but yes, he was a cop for a long time. <laughs> I so. was. 
was a, a, an operating room trauma tech for six years. Yeah. So that means after I shot you, I can then put my hand inside you and <laughs> fix, fix you. you. Right. Uh, not it's, that I ever shot anybody, right. people. And then, and then when he gets you out of the hospital, he's that probably we know. your CEO. Yeah. So he's going yeah. to hey, shoot you, heal you. On that then shot, then... people, can we put an allegedly on there, please? <laughs> uh, look, I'm, not, I'm not displaying oh, this as fact anywhere. Allegedly. Right. We're going to have to Snopes that. <laughs> <laughs> Snopes, Snopes that. how many people think he shot? Well, yeah. well technically, well, none. Yeah. But, but the opinion of yeah. He's a cop, so maybe two at least. On average. I'm going to get these numbers from Wikipedia. But yeah, and that's the thing is like, so all that's just an excuse. All of right. it's just an excuse. Yeah. It really is. At the end of the day, you determine what happens to you. Right. And you determine, uh, not what happens, sorry. You, sometimes what happens to you is outside your realm of control. Right. But you determine your own actions every single day, every single second of your life. You right. determine your own actions. So if you go out and kill somebody... At no point should you be allowed to go, yeah, but I got my ass beat by my dad every second of the day for yeah. 20 years. Right. Who gives a shit? Right. Tough shit. Call him from the herd. See, like with mine, I had like the opposite effect. My dad was, my mom passed when I was young. My, I have four brothers and a sister. My dad is in the military, so he was never home. No fault to his own. It's just, and I never That's what he had to provide for you Right. We had to, we had to survive. Um, so he was in the military, did his thing. He actually had to retire early. Because he couldn't go out and sub for six months and let a 16-year-old watch his, you know, small mm. children. Um, so he retired. M- I, as a parent now, it's not, I don't blame my dad for being there, but I try to be there much more. Like, I am very involved in my children's lives because my dad wasn't so much. And then, like I said, it's not his fault. He had to do, he had to provide. He was a single parent. I don't know how he did it. I have three kids, and I want to throw myself out the window sometimes. And he had four boys and a daughter, or five boys and a daughter, um, by himself. Uh, but his, his, ah. his, that... Y'all didn't have cable at all, did you? <laughs> oh, shit, we're outside. <laughs> oh, God, no. no, what I mean by that is that's why you had six. <laughs> that's why there's six of y'all. There was no TV. No, like, no, TV, no, what? No, dad's like, I'm going to get her pregnant, and I'm out on the sub for six months. <laughs> See ya. And, uh, exactly. <laughs> and he would be gone. Um, and then he got stationed, he had to teach. But that... Why are That's you taking an extra trip a month before I have the baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sub's got to go. She's like, no, <laughs> you're a teacher now. And uh, But, like, that negative, like I said, and I hate to say it's a negative because, like I said, it's not his fault, but that impacted my life in a positive way to where I want to be there more for my children. Mm-hmm. So I do, so so that's where, I, where the, you got to kind of, like, Yes, your brains might be crazy, and sometimes you just can't control it, I would think. I, I mean, I don't know how a crazy person works, well, but I'm saying, like, you can have terrible things or bad things happen in your life. It's just how you respond to them. Mm-hmm. I responded to that by being there more for my children, being loving, being around them, being, like, being a dad, because I didn't get it as much, and I don't want... And like I said, I don't blame it, but I don't want to feel like, oh, crap, where's my my, my parents? My... my uh, I'm... 30 years old and my my dad to this day any of these serial killers never wanted my dad it would have been 10 times worse for him my dad you know good old southern boy German parents all this other stuff he got the shit beat out of him mm-hmm. he was an aggressive he's aggressive to this day yeah um but at the same time he is the best dad in the world like I can I can firmly say that and if anybody's ever seen him yell at any of his kids you're like Jesus Christ Christ, yeah, that's, that's my dad. fucking terrifying. That's that generation. Um, but my dad, you know, he did spank us and stuff like that. That's it's my dad. Did you too. need it mm-hmm. in in situations. And, and, in all and not only that, but it's not like the three of us are small guys. Either. Right? No. <laughs> like, right. I mean, the, sometimes the only point you're going to get is at the end of a belt. Right. Like and, you're going to stop this. Am I really? Blah, 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 blah. You're damn right yeah, I am. Right. And, mm-hmm. I, and as a kid, you know, you're always like, man, my dad's an asshole because he, he spanked me and blah, blah, blah. As I got older, I realized that every single ass whooping I got, I deserved. My Yo, dad yeah. never hit me out of anger just nope. to hit me. He would never get drunk and beat us. He nope. never did. Every time I got my ass whooped, I deserved it. Oh, God. I deserved there, so many more than I got. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, da- my daddy could have beat my ass every day of my life, and I would have deserved every yep. single one of them. Yep. What I'm, what I'm, say, what I'm saying is, if you took it blindly and you looked at, you looked at my dad, it's it's the defense a lot of these serial killers and stuff like that yeah. give. 
Uh, my dad was never home. When he was home, he yelled at us and beat the crap out of us. Right. Yeah. My dad, he had four sons, mm-hmm. all over six feet tall and over two hundred twenty-five pounds. Right. He didn't spank anyone. Right. He backhanded and <laughs> oh, yeah. stuff like that. That's. Yeah. I mean, that's how you get that's things you... through to these. Right, it's thick-headed yeah. mongoloids right, like, you gave birth to. And like to. you're talking about, we're, it's like that animal animal instinct. It's like the young lion. You know, you you gotta put them in their place. And oh, it's not, it's oh, yeah. not just because like, oh, you put them in place. Like, I'll never forget my dad when I got taller than my dad, and I'm only like an inch or two taller than him. Oh, but did he test him? He's no, because he's jacked. And uh, <laughs> even no, because I'm a pussy. Yeah, he's sixty. <laughs> he's sixty three, and I remember when I got taller than him, he's like. You know, just because you're taller than me doesn't mean I'm still. I'm not gonna beat your ass. And I'm like, fair, yes, sir, you will. <laughs> yeah, I can be ten feet you're taller you're right, than my dad, and I would never test him. He could be on his deathbed, frail old man, and I would just be like, no, he's probably gonna get up and kick my ass. One no, more no, no, time. no, no, no. So my dad is compared to me. My dad's a monster. Yeah, my dad is bigger than me, mm-hmm. taller than me, broader than me, has bigger hands than me. Like he is. And I mean, I'm not a little guy. He's not a little guy. I'm, I'm <laughs> six That's two, no to him, 350 a pounds. My dad makes me look tiny. Yeah. When we're standing next to each other, it goes like this. <laughs> like, it's bad. Yeah. So I tell my dad all the time, though, someday, because it'll happen. Is he's got Kim Olajuwon? Well, my dad's got bad knees. <laughs> like, he's got really, I go. said, you're going to be in a fucking wheelchair. So I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, <laughs> and he's like, "That's kind of fucked up." That's yeah. thing, and I was like, "No, no, 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 no." I said, "If we're gonna do it at the edge of some stairs, so I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. I'm gonna throw you down the fucking stairs." And he's and like, "Where does all this come from?" I was like, "Because you beat my ass a lot, right. and I couldn't do anything back." It's true. But I'm gonna wait till you in that wheelchair, and I'm gonna get up behind you. And I said, "You can't hit me from behind. I'm gonna beat your ass and throw you down the stairs." And you know what? And just like in dad nature, he's gonna hit the bottom and then crawl back, back up, up and, and beat, beat your ass. Your ass. <laughs> my, he's gonna, see, he's here's the thing with my dad: legs and beat you. With my them. dad's gonna pull out a forty-five. And shoot me. Oh, yeah. Like my dad's like he's You're gonna come behind him and he's yeah. just gonna have a gun. He's the, he's not right. known for throwing hands anymore. My dad has had both knees replaced and heart attacks and all this other stuff. Yeah. So he's not known for throwing hands anymore, but he's known for carrying guns. Yeah, as he's rolling down those stairs, he's gonna be sliding down his back. <laughs> he's doing like a boot on stage. <laughs> shooting up the stairs. So I do have to say when I was sixteen years old I did I did I, I did test the old Yeah, I did the I'll same thing. I did it. Uh, and I, 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 I can remember it vividly. This is one of the greatest stories I ever have. I was 16 years old. My, my younger brother, he was um, professional. He, I mean, even at the time he was like 15, 16 years old, he was mm-hmm. a prospect to be a professional baseball player. Like, Which brother? Adam. Oh, really? Adam was, um, I mean, he was slated to go to all these colleges, and he... Got entered into the MLB draft when he got out of high school and all this other stuff. So we we spent a lot of time at the baseball field when we were younger because mm. Adam had a real talent for it. Uh, and um, we get to um, one day we're out of the baseball field and I'm kind of sick of it. I'm, mm. I'm tired of being at the baseball field, so I'm going to mess around with my dad. Mm. And my dad just had a second heart attack. He is on heart attack number three right now. Mm. And we're we're hoping for a full hand, and he survives them all. There you go. <laughs> um, but so I told my dad, I'm 16 years old. I've been playing football. I'm like, I could take you. And he goes, No, you can't. And I go, Yes, I can. He goes, He told me one thing that I, uh, that I'll always keep with me. Mm-hmm. My dad goes, You could be bigger. You could be stronger. I will always be meaner. <laughs> and you ain't ever beaten that. And I, I said, well, let's 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 see, let's just let's just mm-hmm. wrestle or something. Let's like that. find, <laughs> let's find out. Yeah, let's find <laughs> out. Come on, bring it, bitch. Is about the word I brought. But um, he grabbed me, and I was considerably stronger than him at the time because I was playing football in high school and lifting weights all the time. I started to get the better of and him, masturbating a lot. A lot. My right hook was on <laughs> point. It, it, it plowed through center blocks. Yeah. Um. So my dad, he started getting a little bit better of me. He reached down, grabbed a handful of boys, squeezed. I, I went uh, and he. No such thing as a fair fight. Sorry. And he, then as I'm going down, I can still remember this. My dad bit the shit out of me. 
on the shoulder and then slammed me. And then he <laughs> stood over me, hand on my neck with his fist in the air, and he goes, you won't ever win a fight against me. It's true. And I don't know if you've seen Josh, but... <sighs> Jesus Christ, I don't know how you could ever manhandle this man. So what's funny about this, <laughs> well, the reason why I was you've like... You've met my dad, and you've met my yeah, dad, and oh, he's yeah. terrifying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love your dad. Your dad's yeah. awesome. Yeah, but if you <laughs> look he's at... he's not your dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your dad... Remember, your dad treats me a lot differently than he treats yeah, you guys. He's not going to grab yeah. me by the ball he, and me. He looks at me and is like... Hey man, what's up? You got laid recently? Like your dad treats me a lot differently. He treats so the, uh, my, dad, my dad, my dad is—you've all seen him. He's just an old school old biker, essentially. Yeah. That's all he is. Just an old. And badass. now he walks in because he's had his third heart attack and he's had open chest. Oh yeah, open he likes heart to, surgery. He likes to show me his zipper. He, he leaves, all the time. He, he he's like, hey, three hey, button and he leaves the bottom button that, open, so that. the scars coming out. Yeah, look at oh, that. My God. Look how and tough he just I am. Loves it. And, <laughs> and he's like, my heart ain't shit. <laughs> the best part is he's built like a triangle because he's got chicken legs. So I never looked at your dad. Like, it, you look at his upper half and you're like, that shit out of me. And then the bottom half, dancer? Now, <laughs> what's funny, the yeah, reason why I was laughing and pointing was because, so I have an older brother. And my older brother is like six foot four, six foot five, mm-hmm. like 230, 240 pounds of solid muscle. Like, you know, like an army ranger or something. Army, all kinds of BS. I don't know. He's got medals coming out of his asshole. Like he he has done like he was did his did his tours in uh, uh, Iraq and stuff, and all this kind of stuff. And my brother, my brother's a natural badass. Like he was a natural badass before he went in the military, and once he got in the military, they just kind of cultivated him to be even that much more of a badass. So, but this is before all that. This is before he actually went overseas and went to war. But it was me and my brother. We're at my dad's house. Um, here in uh, Zuber, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Um, which, uh, people don't know where Zuber is, but whatever. Um, Backwoods. I'm sorry. No, he didn't live in... Yeah, he, lived, he did live in Zuber then. So, we're in Zuber, and my brother's Take like... Uber to Zuber? Ugh. My brother's like, let's jump on the old man. I say, hell yeah, let's jump on the old man. We're outside. So, me and my brother, me and my monster, and I was a cop at the time, so I'm not a little guy either. I'm never a little guy, but I mean, I was like, and my brother's, and he's just a lot taller than me. And like, let's let's jump on the old man. So we jump on the old man. First thing the old man did, pop me as hard as he could, right dead in the dick. Yeah. Mm. Bow, and I, whew, and you know, you ever have that experience where See all, life all, all of a sudden, like your balls don't hurt. Your stomach doesn't hurt, your chest doesn't hurt, but it feels like somebody is grabbing your esophagus mm-hmm. and it's just squeezing it and letting it go and squeezing it and letting it go. That's what happened. He hit me so hard in the balls that my esophagus spasmed. Oh my god. <laughs> and dropped me. Buh. And so my brother grabs him and starts trying to wrestle him. He po- poked him or something. Did something to him. Next thing I know, I hear my brother squalling. Ah! And he's yelling at me, jump on him, jump on him. Meanwhile, I'm rolling around on the damn ground (laughs) trying to figure out why my genitalia is not functioning the way that it should. And I'm like, no, fuck you, I'm out. I'm done. I'm all the way out of this game. And yeah, that was the only time, and uh, that was the last time we ever jumped him. And we were were attempting to jump on him just to wrestle him. So what, what happens in my family... And because I think they're because my family's from the south, like everybody in my family's from the south, is that they're just like fuck it, let it happen, right? Like just just go to town on each other, and I think- that was the last time like either one of us have ever jumped on my father. Until he gets in that fucking wheelchair. Then I'm beating his ass. <laughs> you're, you're gonna get every time you get behind him in that wheelchair, he's just gonna have a gun. You're just gonna hear, you click and you're just like, what the fuck is that? He's gonna have like, like a, holding it. He's gonna have like one of those uh, always... shotguns that they put under the card tables in yep. the old west. Oh, like he's gonna be like arm. in um uh, <laughs> like in Doc hell? Holiday shotgun. Oh, like in um uh, in Breaking Bad, yeah. where they, he's got the bell. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. He's just waiting for the explosion. Yeah. <laughs> he's just sitting there, I'll get you motherfucker. <laughs> So, uh, one last story about my dad, real quick, because I, I, I was there for this one, and I wasn't there for a lot of them. Um, my dad, his name is Jan, and he grew up, he was a teenager in the 70s when the Brady Bunch was a thing. Oh, so he had to get tough real quick. Um, Damn, Jan. Yeah. Um, Jan Merrill. 
So... Is it like a family thing? Like, what is it? Merrill name? is my grandfather's middle name. Okay. So he got that from my grandfather, right. which is... It's... Jan and Merrill are German names. Okay, right that's... There. Yeah. Uh, but okay. in the United States, Jan, we think of Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yep. So we're... At uh, the casino, that's one of my favorite things that I like to do with my parents. We go down there, we have dinner. Uh, there's a casino about an hour and a half from where we're okay, at. Guys. And they have a really nice restaurant, so we go down there for dinner and we gamble and stuff like that. We're sitting there at a uh, slot machine, and a guy tells my mother to move, bitch. This is my machine. Well, that's not smart at all. Yeah, well... And why would you say that to your mom? Your mom is like the saintliest woman in the world. No, she's not. Don't let that... What are you talking about? stint fool you. She's a... She's a fireball wrapped in skin. I love his mom. His my mom's, mom's tougher than my dad. His mom is so sweet to me. She's uh, really... Yeah, the few times I've, I've, I've watched that. Her, I've watched nice. that woman get kicked by a horse, stand up, and beat the shit out of a horse. <laughs> just gets up there, knocks it out. <laughs> <laughs> like the John Wayne just she I'm thinking of uh, 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 Mongo from Yeah <laughs> from, from fucking Blazing Saddles uh, Mongo hit Boom oh, Horse gets yep. back down My mom is the toughest woman alive Um But So my dad hears this And he gets in this guy's face And I Oh shit Now I gotta back up my dad And this guy Guy goes to my dad And my dad, he goes Hey Old fuck Cause my dad's like 60 He goes Old fucker Why don't you sit down Before I break you my dad, without missing a beat, goes, I'm going to take my knife out, carve your liver out, eat it. And I'm like, oh, shit, we just went to a new level. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, just introduced uh, we, well, look, we, we went <laughs> We went all the way to the pate level. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we jumped all of this. Yep. We went straight to pate. We're yep. going to make pate yep. out of your liver. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, my dad. Uh, <laughs> we skip prepping. Oh my god, he just got. He's got fight stories on top of fight stories. But we need to move on from fighting and try to get to this last story that we want to do today. Um, this is the story that I want to bring up real quick. Is a definitely it's a freedom of speech issue. Um, Purdue University. Uh, I don't know if you guys have followed this story. Andy Gross. He's a magician. Ventriloquist comedian. Okay. I don't get me. That's a not lot of name. Mm. Jeff Dunham. Not Je- not named Jeff Dunham. <laughs> right. There's another one. Yeah. yeah. So uh, students walk out of performance after feeling uncomfortable. What's his name? Uh, Andy Gross. Andy Gross. Okay. And it actually has a hashtag going around right now. Andy Gross is gross. It is a huge hashtag no, going around right now. Um. But, so what happened was he was performing his uh, thing at uh, for incoming freshmen. Mm-hmm. And he invited a woman on stage, and they went back to back. And he said, put your hand on my leg, and I'll, it, it makes it easier for me to read the card that's in your hand. You're just trying to do a little magic trick. Mm-hmm. So, she puts her hand on his leg. Everything's fine up to this point. He purposely gets the card wrong. Mm -hmm. And she goes, no. And he says something along the lines of... I think I actually have the exact wording of it. Um, He said... uh, That I... oh, Oh, here it is. Um... Joke's on you guys. I got felt up. To the crowd when they did mm-hmm. the little groan thing. Mm-hmm. Instantly followed by more groanings and people walking out. Mm-hmm. My opinion, that is still PG. That's not yeah. That's not so bad. And there's this huge thing that now comedians are coming out in support of Andy Gross. Saying we're not going to do the college tour anymore. Well, it's just, it's uh, too hard. To, it, we can't. That's we just can't. retarded, though. Like he he's a comedian. Okay. So, for instance, um, and you have a comedian like Kathy Griffin, who pulled T- uh, took something a little too far. Took something too far. She literally is holding the head of no matter what, whatever you think about our POTUS. Um, and she's still, you know, carrying the head of our POTUS covered in blood, holding a knife. You know, that is 
is way too far. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you have um, <clears throat> um, the director for Guardians of the Galaxy two, who now is yeah, not going to do, Gunn. yeah, who's not going to do Guardians of the Galaxy three, even though everybody has come out in support of him, saying, you know, he was a comedian and all this at the time. How are you holding this against him still? And basically. Disney. It's an image issue. It's Dim Disney, right? Was, yeah, Disney. Yeah, Disney and Disney going like, uh, tough. no, we don't want. Yeah, we don't want. The image we don't issue. want. We don't. But then you have the situation like the New York Times, where the New York Times took in a, an editor recently. Did you Did you hear about this? I, I I saw it. I didn't read through it. So there was an editor who uh, put out a bunch of tweets recently, where she was like, "F what all white people in their opinions." They're like dogs pissing on fire hydrants, and I like to seriously F with old white men, and I hope all old white men die, and all this kind of stuff. And it was taken out as, like, trolling. They were like, oh, well, she was trolling people, but she never did the at. You know how, you like, mm -hmm. if I wanted to insult you, I'd be like, at Josh, yeah. you know, you can suck a fat homeless man's dick. And stuff like that. Kind of like how that's I told... That's not... Nice. <laughs> I told me to get I the told, man's dick out of my mouth this morning. Yeah, as, as I told Jason this morning when he was late. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading it as I walked in. Get the homeless... Oh, I gotta stop reading that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, she, so she wasn't doing the ad. So she definitely wasn't responding to anybody. She's just throwing this out there. But in the, in the New York Times was like, no, no, no. We're okay with whatever she said in the past. Blah, blah, blah. She's a great editor. This, that, and the other. There seems to be this weird double standard and line where if you are on one side of this fence no matter what you say no matter what you said and what you've done past present you know it, it all affects your current standing right mm -hmm. where if you're on this other side of the fence none of that stuff matters and honestly enough you could even do something right now and it wouldn't matter yeah <clears throat> um my 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 thing is, is this is comedy. Um, did he touch her? Did he? Nope. No. Did he harm her in any nope. way? No. Sure, her hand was on his leg. Did you have you seen the video of it at all? No. Yeah. Do you I've want me to show? Look. Yeah. Look at how it's literally like her fingertips are on like his pocket. Yeah. It's it's it's. It is literally it's, it's, like it's, the most, it's, it's one of the most it's, innocent it's, it's, things that you, like the way that she's got his, like, when you say hand on the leg, it's like almost misrepresentation. Cause it's it like, like the hover hand. It was like, yeah, it was like the finger, her fingertips are like barely like on his right leg. I mean, it was like the well, most like non-sexual thing that you could you see. you turn it up and put it towards the mic so we can actually. Oh, it's on this side. Yeah. Oh. Um. Let me see, what is your card? Yeah, that's the end of it. But he does yeah. the joke at the beginning where he's like, "Oh, I got a free feel out of it." And you can hear the whole crowd just mm. groan. Ground. And and so Chris Rock got a bunch of crap last year because he said, "I'm not doing the college tour right. anymore." It's they're a bunch of entitled babies. Mm -hmm. And it, coming from coming from a liberal, yeah, coming a bunch from of pussy liberals, that's what it is. Who, I'm, come, a, yeah. I'm a liberal, and I'm like, stop being so fucking liberal. It's okay. You're in college. You're supposed to have fun. It's supposed to be a good thing. But that's the it's thing. A, it's like you're, it's a comedy show. Mm -hmm. Like when did when did college become like such bitches? Like, but I but I'm gonna point this fact out. I'm pointing this fact out. You're a liberal, and right. you know there's a bunch of pussy liberals. Right. I'm a conservative. Right. And, and we also know there's, there's pussy so liberals. okay. A A <laughs> okay. there's a fuck ton of y'all pussy liberals. Right. But B there's a fuck ton of pussy conservatives. Right. Oh, and, yeah. and I mean, ones, and yeah. I'm talking like they get offended over every little yeah. thing in yeah. existence. Right. Like, oh my god. Oh, yeah, that's, Are you serious? That's the thing that's been driving me crazy. Uh, is this whole like being offended? I right, honestly, there are things that should bother you. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't sit around, watch somebody. Like, if you see some dude just backhand a lady, and you're like, oh, oh yeah. that, that guy's done. Oh, him. yeah, he you're should done. be yeah, Unless he's she's on, was on top of him for five minutes, punching him in the face, and then he got that. Oh, okay, he's done. Yeah, he, he uh, needs beating. He needs there's, beating. There's, there's other, th like, there's, I can't even think of things that offend people, because, like, when I see them, I'm like, what, what are you offended by? My favorite thing is when people call me Snowflake. 
because I'm pretty good at like I I'm like very subtle. I call I'm very subtle, but I can with your concern. Wait, 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 hold I on. Be, with your liberalness? Yeah, well, I am. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not anti-gun. Remember, we always talk about. How Hold on a second. Did just you not just one. come up to me two days ago and go, "This is why I hate all cops." <laughs> it's true. But then I've given you two stories back to back, and it's like they must have heard me say that because then I got pulled over again. For the, nothing. The first story I admit was horrible. Right. The second story, it's just uh, as weird as as weird as can be. It's so weird, but yeah. um. But so, like, the snowflake thing, I'm like, okay, well, I'm a snowflake. Well, now I'm going to verbally eviscerate you because I can't. I'm pretty smart. I got a good way of words. I, so, snowflake, immediately I get, quote, unquote, triggered to where I'm going to say the worst thing I possibly can to you because I want to test who's the snowflake. Yeah. Because if you call me a snowflake and I say something, you're like, well, you just made a dick. Well, then who's the snowflake? You yeah, because, yeah, you, you, yeah, you have to have a viable argument. Right. And what I'm, this, this, and I think that you and I are liking this. Right. And I think we just might have found our common ground. I only like to argue, like, if I'm going to argue with you, I'm going to use nothing but facts. Right. And I'm going to crush you with facts. Right. Yep. And if you're going to bring emotion into it and just be like, oh, well, you're just a fat retard. Right. Uh, a, I am fat. Thank you for you, <laughs> Captain Obvious. Go ahead. <laughs> retard. Appar- apparently this retard just smoked you in a, in a fucking intelligence contest. Right. So what does that say about you? Right. So, yeah, I'm going to eviscerate you, but I'm going to yep. eviscerate you using facts. Right. And I'm going to make you look so stupid it's unreal. But so um, this whole this whole thing is brought into effect. He had to he, he promised to return the money that he was given. For I ain't the returning show. squat. Yeah, he was out like four grand. I think it's forty six hundred dollars. I ain't, I ain't returning nothing. Because I ain't they, returning squat. Yeah. So like what happened is like people started hairy. walking out during, during the, the show. show. They started boycotting the show like right after that happened. People just started walking away. Like, but you, but you know the greatest part of the story is is. Wait, wait, what it's college another, was this? Uh, Purdue. Purdue University. Where's Purdue at? Other than the, uh, the Boston? Iowa or something like that. Is it Iowa? I don't know. I don't know where Purdue is. Apparently I don't need to know. It's some snowflake hellhole. Well, it's yeah. from the Lafayette uh, so Journal, so... So, oh, so that's going to be... Indiana? Louisiana. Oh, man. Louisiana, right? I, you know what's bad is? Purdue was one of the high schools that really was recruiting the crap Indiana, out of me yeah. when I was playing football. <laughs> and yeah, I Purdue totally, was a pretty prominent school. And I totally yeah. forgot where they were. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but, well, it's um, like one of those things like you always hear about, like, where's Duke? Oh, yeah, you're like, wait a minute. Where is Duke? Yeah, where is all these teams, and you're like, I think they're South Carolina. Yeah, I North think they're Carolina somewhere. Team. Where's the, where are they at? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Wake Forest, you're like, uh-oh. We play Wake Forest a lot. Honestly, you know, like, Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame me, always always throws me off. I don't know where Notre Dame it's is. In Indiana. It's it. I'm like, man, I should. Beautiful yeah. campus, by the way. Oh, I bet. Hmm? Oh yeah. Most colleges have a beautiful campus. Oh, yeah. I don't well, think I've ever been to a college we, yet that didn't have. We one. live not an hour from one of the prettiest campuses I've ever seen. Not that's not because I've gone there. I've gone to a lot of colleges. Which one? UF, UF is UF. gorgeous. Yeah. FSU probably is one of the prettiest campuses I've ever seen. They've been working, but it's on right. In work, the, yeah, they've been working on it. It's right in the middle of the ghetto. And I mean, when I say right in the middle of the ghetto, you're you're three you're three streets away from getting a drug addict and a stripper. Yeah, my pro- uh, my sister in law lives lives right up lives mm-hmm. right next to campus. And yeah, you're, you're right. You'll see <laughs> some like it's so funny because it's like it's such a weird area. You see all these like beautiful houses, but then like. Like literally one, one street, street. Of, one street. It's all over. Now, I will say this about you have is you get on to Sorority Row and Sorority Row, and then Fraternity yeah. Place, and one yeah. street over, and these houses are falling off their foundation. Yeah, if you go, if you literally go three streets from Greek Greek Street, yeah. if you go three streets. It would be. Let me see. Hold on. If you would go three streets east of Greek Street. You have the homeless shelters oh, yeah. and all this other junk. And oh, like, yeah, the methadone clinics. Yeah, the methadone clinics and everything. Yeah. This, this, my main problem with UF, and, it's, and it has a problem, it, it has to do with the people there. It doesn't have to do with the Oh, yeah, of snowflakes. That's the snowflake central. They are the most lib, liberal. And, and, and when I say liberal, and I don't mean like, like A, they're, they're liberals, which automatically doesn't make them bad people. No. What does make them bad people, though, is that they're... They ignore facts. They ignore facts, and they're ignorant liberals. Just like you have ignorant conservatives. The, the fact that you will not open up your mind enough to know that there's other possibilities out there in this world other than what you think 
is wrong. By the way, my brother, who has been on the show before, he is an extreme... Like, he puts me and Ziggy to shame. He's a staunch conservative. Yeah, like, he is big time. He's up there at UF right now, and he's losing his flipping mind because he's in the law school. Oh, yeah. God. So it's even worse for him. And But, um... So, getting back to this Purdue thing, um, they've actually, like... These students have started, like, a thing where they've contacted, like, Jimmy Fallon and stuff like that, and they're like, don't have him on, and... So we just want to eviscerate this guy for the rest of his life and just, like, try to crush him. I will say this, that the improv has done something really good. The improv, it's a comedy seller and stuff like that. Big time events that have places all over the country. And they've had a lot of big name people there. They're like... Don't worry, he's got a place with us. There we and go. And it's like, it, 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 if if you want to look at real America, you got to look at companies like the Improv mm-hmm. that don't take anything seriously. They are all about show up if you want to. Let our product speak for itself. And definitely, he's one of them. He is not that. I've watched his shows. I'm, it's not my kind of comedy because he puts a lot of magic and stuff in it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of. Uh... But he he should have the right to do his craft well, that's the thing without is... someone trying to. Yeah, but just destroy crush him. him. Just yeah. crush the dude for doing something to like. Literally, there a there's he what he did. There was nothing wrong in what he did. Mm-hmm. Nothing at all. There, nobody was hurt. Nobody was touched. Nobody was well, nothing. Touched. Okay, so he, he was, was touched. touched. He was touched. Yeah. He, was, but I'm talking about he was finger grazed. Yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? Like nothing that he did hurt anyone else. But they want to destroy him. One of the things that um um I read recently was uh, there's I guess it's the University of Virginia, I believe. There is a contributor to the University of Virginia who's given millions, like. Half the campus is dedicated to this one family. And let's call them the Johnsons. Honestly enough, I don't know the name. Mm -hmm. But it came out that way back when, their family were slave owners. Mm -hmm. Like, way back, you know, it was Civil War time frame. Not his fault. But this family gave millions. Not not like, eh. But, like, there's hospitals dedicated to these people. Well, the people on campus have come out and been like, we want all of their names removed from every single building. Why? That's that's my thing. Not just why. Well, here and here's my contention. You're okay with the building. You yeah, just don't want their name okay on it. You're okay with what the building so, stands for. You just don't want the name on it. So here's what we're going to do. Give the family back every single penny they've ever given you, yeah. and you can take their name off. And or uh, advocate, or, or uh, 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 whatever, uh, um, leave the building. Yeah. Don't ever use the building again. We'll repurpose it for something else. And then you can take the family's name To the family's it. liking. <laughs> yeah, the family gets to decide what happens to it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like, They're like, okay with, with it, What it sounds like with the Purdue people is that these are a bunch of entitled snowflake rejects yeah. who saw something and were like, huh, I don't know. And then one person was like, no! And let's march out. And then all of a sudden it started this whole procession. And... You have the like the pack mentality in our universities is just getting ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's we we are we are educating a generation of herd. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are literally you are literally a herd. Yes. And whatever someone tells you, you should feel your feeling. Whatever you fe- whatever someone tells you, you should be outraged at. You're outraged at, and it's not. You know, hey, for fuck's sake, just be a. Be your own freaking person. Exactly. It's, it's not that. It's not that difficult. Um, it's it's. How much it, time do we have, by the way? Uh, we got about five, ten minutes. Damn it. Um, but uh, so, just like kind of leading into that, it's you, you really feel outed on college campuses right now if you're a conservative. I've I'm just a few years out of college, and I felt. Ostracized. Oh god! I'm... Can you imagine me on a college campus right now? Oh, I'd be fighting every day of my life, and yeah. I would love every second of it. I mean, I'll be honest. Yeah, ain't but, nothing more I mean, fun was, than slapping a little. I was, I was utterly ostracized on campus. My ideals were not of that, and I used to do things like wear NRA shirts just to piss people off. I would do and the same was, thing. It was fun. 
My, um, my question is this. is uh, But I was definitely in a minority of oh. my age group. But the problem is, is what they don't understand is these college kids don't understand. They are a minority onto themselves. Mm-hmm. College kids versus non-college mm-hmm. kids, they are a minority onto themselves. Yeah, raise your so, hand at this table who went to college. I'm a minority. <laughs> I, did like, I did like a semester. Uh, I did a trade school. I went to the police academy if that yeah, helps. I did a semester. Oh, I'm, I'm, I want to go one, back. But so that's one other thing that I've told people. That's one other thing that I've told people is um, that trade school is definitely the way to go in today's society. Oh, yeah. Uh, because college has become outdated. We're, we were lied to when we were kids. Oh, yeah. Because we all belong to essentially the same generation. Ziggy's right. a little bit older than us, and I'm not taking a jab at Ziggy, but G- Ziggy's a little bit older than us, and he was even lied to oh, yeah. in his generation. The positives, unless you were going to college to become a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor or something like that, right. you do not need college to do well in this world. I have a friend who, I tell this story all the time, he is an underwater welder. Uh, he went to a trade school for eight months. Guy makes fifteen thousand dollars a job. Yeah, then yeah. under under, how underwater, awesome would that be? Right, swimming around <laughs> underwater welding stuff. Yeah. How manly! Like so, that's a guy who pees whiskey. Yeah, and, and he sweats tequila. And I have another friend who's a friend of Ziggy's as well. Um, he's a crane operator. Crane and operator. He went to he went to school for. Eight months, nine months, whatever it is, to become a crane operator it doesn't take long. Right. Oh yeah, it was actually shorter than that. Yeah, and like then he has four. to do like a year or something like that, mm-hmm. probationary or yeah. something mm-hmm. like that. And the dude makes like sixty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, it's like with my ex. She went to, um, she did like the trade school. She went to, it's what is it, MTI now with CTAE. It's been a hundred different things. That mm-hmm. school right there. She did six months, uh, got a job. She's like, oh, uh, became a phlebotomist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Made really good money. She's like, oh, if I just go to school, back to this trade school for another six months, I could start at $18 an hour for a job. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's what she does. She just sits there. She works in an oncology center. So she gets to test. Like, she sends me pictures of, like, people's, like, testicles and all. Because she does, she does, like, cancer tests and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Or things that have cancer. They go mm-hmm. and test all this stuff. So she sends me all this crazy shit. And she loves her job. Plus, so, you get to spend eighteen dollars an hour. Yeah. What? So, the ultimate thing of this, I always tell people when trade school is my mother. Mm-hmm. My mother is a trade school graduate, mm-hmm. and my mother makes half a million to a million dollars a year. Yeah, but your mother is also one of the best ultrasound techs known to mankind. Yeah, and she but she's travels doing all it. over the country training people. And, and she's been doing it for... 35 years. But, I mean, <sighs> even at the beginning, she was making... In the early 80s, she was, you know, making $17 an hour in the early 80s. Um, so, it's... Cat, that's pretty cool. Um, Did you see the caption, though? No. It says... <laughs> okay, just real quick, guys... This because this is hilarious. We funny. we all have ADD. So. This, this, this is sexist as hell, but it's funny. It's funny <laughs> at the same the time. ADD show. Because is there's a picture with all the female cast members from the Avengers movies. It says, "Is there an all female Avengers movie in the works?" And the response was, "Sounds great, but who would they fight?" The next response was, "Each other, probably." <laughs> <laughs> it's true. True. But you women need to stop tearing each other down. Yeah. Okay? The most classic thing that I the most Actually, classic. Me too. Yeah, that's too. Yeah, a classic statement. Uh, why aren't you friends with girls? All girls are bitches. You know how many times I've heard that from a woman? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. girls are bitches. They just backstab you. If you all have that toxic mentality, that's why you don't get along. Yeah. Guys saying, oh, guys, because we don't give a shit. No, we don't care. Oh, he's going to backstab me. Well, fuck him then. Yeah, See fuck ya. you. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. We'll just fight about it. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't give a damn. So I'll tell you to fuck off, and that's... Me- one less person I have to worry about. Me and Jason met about four years ago, and Jason obliterated me in a board game, <laughs> and I got really salty about it the night, <laughs> that night. I didn't see him again for two, three years. It was a while. Um, then he came back into the store, we hung out again, and yep. then he started working at the comic book store that we... And then I uh, came to your business. Yeah, I came to, came to my business, and I can honestly say Jason's one of my best friends. But me and Jason are on such different sides of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. We're not even close. Liberal. 
I'm li- conservative. Yeah. <laughs> Liberal douche, crazy conservative. Yeah. That's our, um, that's our, uh, 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 I'm, I'm totally well, okay hold with on a that. Second. Liberal the, douche, My crazy question is this. Where do I fit on the spectrum? Oh, dude, you are... You're like that kind of... If it, was a teeter t- if it was a teeter-totter, he'd go into outer space. <laughs> well, no, because here's cartoon, the thing is, you realize that I have some <laughs> strangely strong liberal views. See, and that's how I am with conservative like, views. Like, gay marriage. I am, which I know you're for as well, don't you yeah, know? I'm but I mean, it. I'm I'm violently for it. Like, yeah. if they were like, we're not letting gays get married, I would be the one being like, let's burn the capital to the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah. Let's do this. Right. Um... Uh, abortion, which My, is something that we we do, we I am a hundred percent pro choice. I mean, not even like a little bit pro choice, but like they say no to abortion, they turn over Roe v. Wade, let's <laughs> burn it to the ground, <laughs> like yeah. violent. So, as much as I am violently conservative on things like uh, specific law and pu- uh, 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 law and punishment, you know what I'm saying, like crime yeah. and punishment. Yeah. Um, See, and that's what I am. I'm like super conservative on that. I'm like, oh, they committed a terrible crime. Take that motherfucker behind the courthouse and shoot him in the face. You have See? cops everywhere. They have guns. Let the cops just be like, bam, motherfucker, dead. Dumpster. Don't bury him. Burn that motherfucker. Just throw him in the dump. I don't care. We have a, we have a dump uh, in Ocala. I want, me we, and Jason are finding our common wait, ground. I mean? like, that's uh, my, yeah, because when it comes to I do law, take yeah. Jason's, I do want to take Jason. I want to do one of these from, I want to do one of the two jerks from a gun range. <laughs> I, and I just want I just want to have I it, do like, know the I people don't mind from Red I've, I've, I've only been a few times and like I, I said, just want to like, see Jason come out of there and at the end of it be like well I didn't mind but now I got PTSD because of that AR-15 you just made me shoot right <laughs> <laughs> I touched an AR-15 guys I mean hashtag me too <laughs> hashtag me too <laughs> me too he, he, made, he forced so, his gun on so me so this is how conservative I am in in my crime and punishment though is that I think the death penalty doesn't cover enough I think that we should include lesser crimes, i.e. rape, child molestation, and any crime involving gross disfigurement, i.e. some bitch gets mad at Josh, throws hot grits on his ass, scars him for the rest of his life, we take the bitch outside and we kill her. Because I just call that foreplay. Anytime, anytime you're destroying Free someone's life... You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's certain rape victims that don't come back from it. No. There's certain, you know, child molestation victims that can't come back from it. Oh, especially child molesters. You, if you touch a kid, yep. So yeah, I think that, that once off. once you go to that Vicky's extreme or you're where you were, you were literally out, you were literally just destroying yeah. someone's life, their yeah. entire life, yeah. there is no help for you. Fuck you. Yeah. Let's take you out back. We call it calling the herd. Right. Take you out back. Dig a little hole. I'll have you dig the hole. You don't want to dig the hole? Fine. I'll hi- I'll have a trustee come out and dig the hole. He's getting he's going to get a couple days off a of sentence. He's right. happy to do it. And he's outside. He don't, he don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, you, have you ever seen Shawshank Redemption? Right. They were happy to be retarded in that roof. Yep. And that's what's going to happen. Yep. So you can do it. You're going to delay your death a little bit longer. You you know you have a little bit more time on this earth if you want to do it yourself. If you don't want to, I'm cool with that too. Yeah. Because I'm just going to shoot you, and then I'm going to have him bury you. Yeah. Yeah, because that's like when we when we go to the cause like I I have the liberal views, but we go like with the guns. I'm not necessarily opposed to guns. I just think people need like my gun thing always goes back to mental health because I'm not against you owning a weapon, but I need there needs to be I don't know like I just don't know how you do it. That's my thing is I don't know the answer to the question, but there needs to like because because you're not. Just because you own a gun doesn't make you a crazy person. You want to no. be safe. Like with you, you got robbed, and you're like, that's never going to happen to me again, so you have a weapon because of it. I totally get that. Many. But you're not the type <laughs> of guy that, like, I'm not saying, but but you're also not going to be the guy that just walks into a group of people and just starts murdering them. Well, this, this, see, this depends. And I'll tell you why. Because I have an out strategy. And this is, this is my out. So... Um, and I talked about this with my law enforcement buddies way back when, okay. when I was back in the co- back in my cop days. You ever heard the term suicide by cop? Yes. Okay. You ever heard the term suicide by drug dealer? No. So what I'm going to do is, if I ever have one of these incurable diseases and Ziggy's about to die, he's got stage four lung, brain, ass cancer, as I'm going to give me Ooh. some guns. I'm going to go to these little nests where they have like pedophiles and yeah. shit like that, and I'm just going to start executing motherfuckers. <laughs> like, this is no lie. So, like, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to have them kill me, you know what I'm while saying? While taking out as many While training as, as I can. And then luckily, 
So, but and the good thing yeah. is, is they're pedophiles, which is a felony, so they shouldn't be. They, they should have the gun. They should have gun anyway. Right. But they, they probably will. Like I'll. But if they, I'll, they shoot you, they're going back to jail. I'm gonna set, that yeah, got a gun. I'm gonna. I'm gonna set up this whole like <laughs> online thing. Where I'm gonna be act like a 13 year old boy the, and uh, get like 80 guys that are like, I want to touch that little boy's meat, well, and then I'm just gonna start. Well, what was the show with, the, with Chris Hansen? Catch a predator. Yeah, you're gonna do catch a predator, but as soon as they walk through the door, you're I'm just gonna kill them. them. Execute them. Bah! Every time a guy opens the door, he's like, yeah. What's that stack of dead? <laughs> he's like, I got <laughs> balloons and wine cooler. Oh. Why is there so much balloons and blood in this building? What? What's with? Hey, there's condoms all over the walkway. What happened? One tried to run away. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, the last face you'll ever see, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm yeah, dead serious. Now that I, have children, I am oh, legitimately yeah, dead serious. I just imagine Ziggy inside the door, and he's like waiting for him. Door opens, and he's like, "Run, Gary Glitter!" <laughs> Boom! Oh yeah, I'm just like. Yeah. That would be it. Would be my goal in life is like mm, I want to yeah. shoot. I want to kill Jared. You know what? And, uh, like, and the best part that is, would be awesome. And the best part is, is I, w- I wasn't saying nobody would hate you because there's still going to be those people that will defend the guys that you kill. But uh, how I'm could t- you not be here? I'm telling at that you point? right now. There's I, I'm a part of a podcast group. I will not divulge your name because they're actually kind of big and they would be highly highly offended. But. We legitimately got into an argument because they want to abolish prisons. Abolish them. They did not exist anymore because you can you can rehabilitate and train everybody. The Dutch taught us that. So where do we do that at? Colleges. They want so to- we send these people to to Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is even better. It's even better. You know what a Pell Grant is, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Give them a Pell Grant. No, there there is a, a movement right now amongst liber- like and we're talking far yeah. far left leaning liberals. Oh. Not not my yeah. not no, me no 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 not your not me liberal far left leaning liberals where they want to give back Pell grants so that inmates can go to college while they're incarcerated. This is no lie. Ugh. All right, guys. <laughs> With that one, we we have kind of exceeded our time today. Yeah, we've been going. For um, a while. Does anybody have any last words of advice for any of our listeners? Or anything um, you took away from today? If you need help, get it. Yeah, just, just get help. Yeah, anybody, get help. Even if it's not from a psychiatrist. If you got a friend, literally anybody, grab a stranger on the street and talk to them. And if anything, if they call the police and they freaked out, you'll get help somewhere. No. Somebody will help you. And number two is, don't be a pussy. Yeah. Quit. It, automatically, if something happens, take a step back. Look how it actually impacts your life, and if it doesn't impact your life at all, don't give a fuck about right, it. Yeah. Right, right. It's like that the, simple. That whole the whole comedian thing. Yeah. yeah. Like just, you, just, if you were, because if you get called up on stage, you know something's going to happen. Yeah. You're probably going to get embarrassed. They're comedians. They don't take it personally. It's just what they do. Yeah. They're not trying to embarrass you to make you look like an idiot. It's just funny, and then that you just just take comedy it is the comedy is the last saint, the last fortress of free speech in this country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't destroy. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. comedy. It's literally the opposite of being serious. Yeah, it's like, meant to push the envelope, and it's meant to put a. Light spin on right. that pushing. It's not the like he was facing her and he's like, "Put your hand on my dick and then do that." He's like, yeah. "Barely put three of your fingers Don't. on my side." All right, so listen, I'm gonna predict your card, but when you do it, you have to reach down and grab a handful of my meaty hog. <laughs> yes. All th- right, that's too far, <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> that's so the, far. Yeah, that would be. That. I would still <laughs> laugh if I was in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. I admittedly, I would chuckle. Then I'd be like. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, after this, I'm going to take you out back and I'm going to beat the shit yeah, out of you. Yeah, uh, just, but keep it going, you, joke man. Keep yeah. going, joke man. Yeah. But as soon as you're done, yeah. I'm kicking the shit hey, out of like, you. Hey, Karen, just get off stage. Don't. Yeah, don't Karen, grab, yeah, don't, don't even, don't even, just Karen. Yeah, Karen, go ahead and leave. Yeah, Karen, just go ahead and leave. But I'm really going to beat the shit out of you when we get done with this. Right. But so my word of advice, and we're going to end it here, is always peel your hard boiled eggs. Um, always peel them. Always peel your Always. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's us. Hey, okay, bye. 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 We'll be back next week with more of this crap and useless information. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube at Geek Culture. Oh, isn't that fucking a problem?